Hey, this is Phil, and this is part four of the implant planning tutorial. So in parts one through three, we've done all the initial setup with creating our panoramic curve. We've mapped our nerves. We've also uh, played around with different regions of interest tools, such as you know being able to delete the maxilla or the mandible very easily, um, toggling those back and forth. Uh, different cross-sectional tools we've also played around with. Uh, if you haven't watched parts one through three, you can go ahead and search those and watch those and get up to speed with where we are right now. So right now we're at the point where we want to begin placing the implants. So a reminder, we're on version 3.10.12. If you're on an older version, you can download this right from our website. Uh, currently we're lined up on top of our crown in a cross-sectional view, and we're ready to place an implant. So you can take measurements like we've already reviewed in previous videos, but the easier way to do it really is just select your implant. You can turn this tutorial off just by selecting do not show again. And right now it's still, the implant is currently highlighted still, and you can see it gives you like a little window of where you want to actually begin to take a length measurement. You do one single click and you'll notice that eight millimeters is actually the shortest distance it's, a, it's allowing me to measure. And that's because in the implant uh, system and grouping that I have selected as my favorites in the software, that's the shortest implant. So that's why it's not allowing me to go any further or any shorter than eight millimeters. You'll also notice after I do my first click, it's uh, the, the degrees of angle I have compared to where I have my crown placed. So now when we click a second time, it opens up my favorite window of which implant system I'm using, uh, which is you know my tapered screw vent for Zimmer. And it's also going to recommend the best option uh, based on that length measurement. And if this is the implant that I want, then I can just select okay, or I can actually look at and view each implant as I go, and you can watch in the lower right-hand view, your cross-sectional view, as I select each implant, it's going to change it on the fly so I can help visualize my plan. If I wanted to select a different implant or one of my favorites, I can open this up and I can look at one of these. If I wanted a different one altogether, I can select expand, and then I could add in whichever implant I want from any of the manufacturers that are available in my favorites. Okay, so let's change this back to, to Zimmer. And if this is the implant that I want, I'm going to go ahead and select okay. So we can see a couple things. We can actually see where the implant is protruding out. The yellow is my restorative space. Uh, we can see this little cone to show us, or if you want a better visualization, go into your preferences, go to implant, change your yellow restorative space to 20 millimeters. So now you can much more easily see how that implant is planned and where it's going to project out for restorative purposes. So now we can actually change the angle of the implant. I can zoom in on my cross-sectional view. That gives me a much better view uh, and more canvas to play with so it's easier. I can do the same thing for my panoramic curve, okay? You can also see the actual label or the object properties. It shows you what specific implant it is and the size and the dimensions. Sometimes these can get in the way, so I can do one of a couple of things. I can actually just left-click and grab it and move it out of the way. Or on my left hand side, you'll notice this whole blue area is opened because this is an implant on number 30. I can left click and it will close that whole window or left click again on, on the bar. It will open the entire window. And now you can see actually a variety of options here, which I'll go through in a minute. Uh, this little button right here, show hide object properties. That is there whether or not the blue bar is open. And if I select this, then you can see my object properties are now gone. 
So now we can more easily manipulate our implants. So you can see here we've got three nodes here in our cross-sectional view. We also have three nodes in our panoramic curve. And in the cross-sectional view, I can grab the top node, and you can see I'm tilting it from a buccal lingual perspective. When I grab the coronal aspect of the implant, the apical portion of it is on a fulcrum. Same thing goes if I grab the apical part of the implant and the coronal aspect is on a fulcrum. The middle node is more of a bodily movement. And the same thing goes in our panoramic curve. I can grab the coronal aspect of the implant and the apical portion of it stays on a fulcrum. And now I'm actually just changing the angle from a mesial distal perspective. You'll also see in the 3D rendering, as I manipulate the implant, you'll see it change on the fly. Okay, so let's cover some tools here on the left-hand side. So we've got this little eyeball. We can actually hide our implant. This is for this specific implant. If I close this, I would see multiple implants. If I have multiple implants treatment planned, then I can hide all or just one at a time. Okay, let's click on my blue bar to open this back up. Um, I've already showed you the object properties. So we can see here, here's our object properties. Hide those. We can change the color of each implant. If I hover my mouse over this area right here, you can see it shows me the specific implant and the details. This is a useful tool, center at implant. So for example, if my cross-sectional view was somewhere else, and I want to actually visualize the implant or bounce around from implant to implant. I can very easily do that by center at implant. I can do the same thing if, again, I was somewhere else on my scan. And I want to center on a crown. I could do the same thing. Okay. Of course, I can delete my implant. And here, this is also very helpful. So if I actually... Look at my cross-sectional views or my panoramic or both. I can change the length of the implant within that particular grouping. So for example, if I hit my minus sign, if you'll watch your implant over here, you can see it's going to change it to the next shortest implant within that particular implant grouping, or I can increase the size and so on. I can also change the width here right in the actual system itself. I can't go any further because that's the, uh, the smallest width implant within that particular implant grouping. What I can also do is replace my implant. So currently we have our Zimmer tapered screw vent, but let's say I wanted to choose an, another implant altogether. If I deleted this and then added a new implant, I would have to reposition and angle that implant all, uh, all over again. If I select my replace implant icon, I can choose an entirely different implant, select OK, and it automatically places it back to how you originally had it planned. So that should save a lot of time if you're switching implants altogether. This icon here allows me to add an abutment, and you can make it either a straight or angled abutment. You can play around with those features to your liking. I'm not going to go through it uh, entirely on this tutorial. Then you can visualize the implant placement a little better. Like I also showed you in previous videos, by looking at your cross-sectional view, not just as a one individual slice that's 150 microns, because that doesn't really tell us that much about that entire edentulous area, but switching to a three by three with 1.1 millimeter increments. So now we're looking at roughly 10 millimeters of edentulous space in one single view. And this was all reviewed in more detail in a previous video. So once you actually have your plan, also if you merge your digital impression scan like so, which you would normally do at the beginning of the case, like I showed you in the previous video, but not super important for the purpose of this video. But once you have everything planned, you can obviously just freehand your implant based on your plan. Or if you wanted to take it to guide, you could export your data sets and send it to any lab. If you wanted to design it yourself, you've got your Blue Sky planning software right here. So I can do a single click that'll launch Blue Sky planning software with your full plan attached.
Something to note, the Blue Sky icon will only show up if you have Blue Sky planning software installed and you have the PDIP module. And then you can design your own guide, export, and print. You can also, with my little drop-down arrow, um, actually, you can see here, here's a little tip. I click on my drop-down arrow, I've got more icons down below, but they're kind of pushed off of the page. So make sure you close these toolbars. That pulls this export box up, and now I can see what options I have. So you can also export that plan to Swiss Meta for a very unique and effective surgical guide. So definitely check that out. Or 360 Imaging, which is a guided surgery company which you can take your plan and send it directly to them using 360 Courier, which when you hit that 360 imaging link, it will launch 360 Courier, fill out your RX, and send that case directly to them. They will then fabricate the guide and send it back to you. So you can do all that directly from the CareStream software. And one last little trick on this tutorial is, if I go into oblique slicing, this is just more of a cool factor. You can see here in oblique, I have a cropping tool, so if you want to show this for a little show and tell with your patients, I can move any of these little nodes and crop out my plan. So if I want to have a patient discussion and kind of show them what's happening on the inside, again, probably not necessary for you, but from a cool factor perspective and wow factor, uh, it is pretty nice. Hope this all helps. Feel free to reach out with questions. Thanks.